Hey guys, it's Jimmy here, and welcome back to our anime reaction. Today, we're reacting to the second episode of The Eminence of Shadow Season 2. I'm looking forward to it. Sid is back, Shadow is back, the Sh Shadow Garden is back, and we're finally going to get into some serious action within this arc, because I am looking forward to it. And if you guys enjoyed my reaction here today, make sure to smash the like button. Get subscribed so you don't miss some future anime reactions because on Friday we'll be reacting to Goblin Slayer season two, which I'm looking forward to. And of course, I will be breaking this down for YouTube. So if you do want the full length reaction, consider supporting me on Patreon. Get full length reaction, exclusive anime reactions, and so much more. And for right now, though, let's get into it. So what's going on here? Who just got butchered? Oh, is this guy? So there's some. Oh, this is the white captain or the knight or wait, was it? The White Reaper, something like that? I'm forgetting his name. He literally said it last episode and I completely forgot about it. So it looks like in the past, the guy versed the vampires and stuff like that. He got taken down by a vampire and now he's like kind of the gatekeeper because of that. So that's the lore for him. And he likes killing people, even though he was the captain of the knights. Here's the berserker, dude. This guy's awesome. All you really need to know, he just dismantles everything he fights. <laughs> Juggernaut of the tyrant. Okay, I thought it was called berserker. I'm not going to lie. And then here's the fox. And they're just fighting right off the rip. <laughs> even Shadow steps in. He probably doesn't even know who Shadow is. He just knows those two are two big dogs he shouldn't mess with. On his, and uh, he can't beat them. I wonder if they're going to change anything in the manga today for this episode. Because they changed like one thing last episode. Well, there was a few things they changed, but I only went for the big thing. Oh, he's repeating the phrase from last episode from the Vampire Witch, dude. <laughs> Okay, they changed this part slightly. So, um, yeah, there's one thing they changed, and I'll, I'll have to go over it later, but it's honestly kind of like a funny bit, but they removed it, which is unfortunate. That's not the guy you want to fight. Okay, they changed this just slightly. A little bit unfortunate, but whatever. Bro, Lily got dismantled quite literally. Okay, I want to I want to go over one thing real quick because this is something that kind of annoys me. Okay, originally in the panel for this, where they actually fight, as soon as like I got apes shadow. His head's gone, and all you see, like, it cuts to a pan the next frame. It's him looking up at the sky and says, why am I looking up the sky? It looks so nice tonight. Like, so nice and red. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit unfortunate that they changed that bit. The other thing they changed, too, was actually the part when um, he intervenes between, actually, the tyrant and also the fox. And Lord, the fox is like, oh, my God, you thank, you thank you for saving my girls. Like, and let me try. I should reward you later. And she grabs his arm and stuff like that. And and he just like says, get off me. I don't care about that. And 
I don't need a reward, something like that. And he's like, she's like so humble, and the, but the tyrant's like, oh, you just fox, you got turned down, lol. And oh, that that part that was funny in the the manga. A little bit unfortunate that they removed it from the actual like anime here, but not the worst thing in the world because they just want to get right into it. I'm pretty sure what they're going to try to do for this season is get for the first four episodes via the Blood Moon arc and transition the next four or six episodes into the uh, Warfare arc. That's what I'm least thinking, unless they're trying to do something else because like they went for a lot of information already in this actual uh, season so far, which is not bad per se. They're doing it really good, but it's a little bit unfortunate that they cut some things out in here and there, but it's one of those things that's like, I'm not too concerned about, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> What the hell's going on here? Secret passage be like. So Claire and the vampire witch are finally here in the tower. And of course they have to happen to run into beta. She can't kill Claire. She's supposed to get rid of any witnesses that see it. And of course, you can't really kill Shadow's sister. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're all doing the thing, of course. 666 is here too. So long story short, they're trying to break down the theory that the Blood Witch is a core, a core Blood Queen is similar to that aura. So that's why they want blood samples. It's kind of just test it to see what's going on with it. And of course, as soon as uh, yeah, they're worried about Sid and of course 666 hears him is like, wait a minute. She cares for Sid so much still, dude. You know Mary's hiding secrets from her, 100%. There's like no shot they don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm surprised that literally she doesn't know Sid is Shadow or that she's oblivious to that fact. Like, I, I don't know, man. Just unfortunate that she doesn't understand that because that would get a lot of, rid of a lot of her concerns. But it's, yeah, she just doesn't know. You know what I'm saying? It makes this POV from Claire feel like she's the main character of the story, even though she's like a background character. It's weird because like all the characters that when they're not focused on the show are the main characters, if you think about it. Bro caught them so fast. Claire just got punched through the floor, dude. 
Ooh. Did you get decapitated? Wow, Mary is like 100% gone. She's like half her, her body's gone. What the hell, your reaction? Hello. Oh, wow. Dude, Lily only took a drop, bro. Is it really? It's in the kick up. Oh, that's not good. So <laughs> did you have to come in and clutch, bro? Bro, he's moving so fast that Lily lands on him and sends him flying, dude. Bro, send him to the first floor, dude. He does not care. I still find it weird that they don't. I love the I love the after effects. He leaves and then he still leaves a lingering sound effect. That's how you, that's a pure Edmonds and Shadow moment right there, dude. Dude, I will. I, I'm still surprised they never did the the mask for him because originally in the actual like manga and stuff like that, he has like a shadowy figure around him anytime you look at him. So you never actually see his face. It's kind of unfortunate that I just didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? But we now know that the anti the vampire hunter is. A vampire, and that was the secret all along, which I think we could all tell that was blatantly obvious. So it looks like vampires in the past, Lily were at the golden age, and of course, they learned that humans learned their weakness, they got butchered, all that jazz. And of course, like that, the blood queen gave up drinking blood, and of course, they just normally adapted living like human because they didn't drink blood, so like the sunlight didn't affect them anymore, which is an interesting concept to think about because I guess it's a kind of a curse you live forever, but you don't need blood. So it looks like even for the vampire clan, even if they don't drink blood or the high top, they still get affected by the uh, um, curse. So they still get burned through the sun and stuff. But the thing with it is, my question is like, how does that work for the underlings? I guess it's because they're not a higher rank and they're not that uh, bad. I don't know. But it looks like her thirst never was quenched even after like stopped drinking blood. Oh. So it looks like one of our underlings gave her blood and then she caused him. Oh my god, dude. What? There's Lily blood everywhere. Like, oh my god. Oh, okay. So it looks like the queen. Went to kill herself because she didn't want to have the events happen again because she like butchered everyone. But since she doesn't normal level, she didn't get to turn to ash. And Lily, her body was preserved. And they just kept her. That sounds like a hazard waiting to happen, you know what I'm saying? So it looks like we know who the real mastermind is, is this guy, because he wants to revive her and have the whole incident happen again. Looks like they're working together to stop the crimson guy from reviving the queen, so he can just beat the crap out of him, you know what I'm saying? I don't blame them, though. Looks like, so Sid found the treasure, and he's going through his stuff, and he's only looking for stuff he wants. 
I guess he wants money. So she's using the method Epsilon uses for uh, increasing her chest for storing all the gold in his armor. So literally every part of his armor is now slightly heavier because how much gold he's carrying, bro. So he wants to go for the fact now that he's going to be the guy who defeats the final boss as the eminent shadow. Instead of him being the intercutscene guy, he wants a little bit more action for this uh, part. I wasn't ready for that. I was not ready for that. He didn't even get to say I'm atomic, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> Uh, hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They literally said, let's cut to the part where we get to the boss fight. And he said, nah, we're gonna screw it. We're gonna kill it right now. I'm over here like, I didn't think we we're gonna get it. It's already like past the 20 minute mark. I thought they were gonna just cut the cutscene and transition to the final part of the episode. But what the actual hell? So that was episode two of the Eminence and Shadow. I literally thought they were gonna do episode three, focus on the part where like he goes to the verse of the boss and all that jazz. I'm not gonna say any more than that because it can spoil the territory. But I will say this though, I was not ready for that. They literally found out that Mary is a actual vampire. We found out the lore that the vampire queen stopped drinking blood so that way she could live with humans. However, even though she's the vampire queen, even if she stops drinking blood, she still lives forever. However, if she, she she still has a quench that's unquenched over time, it'll break her, you know, down. And literally, it happened. And of course, the other vampires made her do it because then that way they could butcher everyone. And literally, she killed herself so that way she doesn't have to be a part of the thing, right? And that way she doesn't repeat the cycle again. But literally, the vampires betrayed her uh, assistant because they want to revive her and repeat the exact same event. So that's why Mary's out to kill the vampire queen. So we now know the lore, so now Claire and them are gonna work together. But I love, can I just quickly say, the fight between Claire and them and just showing them in the Tyrant or the Juggernaut, that was a pretty good fight. I love how Shadow just steps in and stops on him. And he doesn't intervene because of his sister's sake. He even says in the treasury room that he's like, oh yeah, I think I just stole my sister right there. She she will be fine by herself. She doesn't need me. Bro Lily came in like the protagonist and saved her, but isn't the protagonist, he's the Eminence in Shadow. But I will say, I love the part where like, they sh even after he leaves, he leaves like an after sound, like the, the frenzy's about to begin, all oh, that jazz, oh, it's a little time, you can like hear the echo effect. That was clean. That was very, very clean. That I feel like, I feel like I feel that out of a video game because how clean that was, you know what I'm saying? When you get in the cutscene. But uh, yeah, that was good. And then we transition to our boys in the vault and Lily, he wants to do something different this time. Instead of being the background character that comes in, the eminence of shadow, the like last second to change thing up with everyone out noticing, he really wants to step in, beat the final boss before everyone gets there. So that way they walk to the, the boss area and they're like, oh my God, where's the boss at? And then you just see shadow like, oh my God, shadow. Like that, that kind of ordeal. Cause we've seen that in video games in the past, but he wants to do that. He does that. And I was not ready for it because Lily happened within like less than a minute because Lily usually by the 20 minute mark of an episode, the episode ends, right? But not this time, not this time. They said, he didn't even say, I have a talk. He just disrespected the van. Like you just see them get absolutely disintegrated, bro. Like, oh my God, dude. We, I, I'm a hundred percent sure without a doubt in my mind. There's no shot. He's going to one shot the boss and the boss does not recover. You know what I'm saying? Like for plot relevancy, they're going to have to bring her back or there, there's some bolt BS going to happen. You know what I'm saying? But like, I feel like at the same time too, we most likely know that even if he did one shot the boss, he could one shot the boss. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like I don't, I don't know how this is going to actually actually play out. Even though I read the manga, I don't want to spoil it. So. You can make your assumptions on that one alone. But this was a really good episode here today. If you guys enjoyed my reaction and review over the episode and the things that you noticed throughout it, then make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed so you don't miss some future anime reactions. And I'll see you guys for another one. G-Man, out.